The wait is over. Jacob Fatu has officially debuted in WWE. He has joined the new version of the Bloodline, and there was a lot of speculation. Could he join the originals? Will he join the new version? We've always had kind of the same thought that he would eventually join uh, Solo Sokoa's version of the Bloodline. And, you know, there was the report out there uh, a while back that WWE was kind of worried and maybe delaying his debut a little bit because they were worried that he could outshine Solo. Well, there could be some people who feel like, you know, in a couple, span of a couple of minutes on SmackDown that he may have already done that because this was one of the more impressive debuts I can remember for someone in a storyline this big. Uh, whenever they bring Jacob Fatu out to attack the biggest star in the company, Cody Rhodes, send him through a table. He also attacks Kevin Owens, also attacks Randy Orton, and takes all of them out without any help. He just takes them all out. That shows you that this guy is a force to be reckoned with, and it shows you that he's a big deal. But there was also a nice little clue, I thought, in the reaction to Jacob Fatu doing everything that I just said. Because that, to me is the clue that tells us where we go next in this story. Because there was something interesting that happened. And I know some people caught it. I've seen some people talking about it on social media. But the whole build to this thing has been that Solo Sokoa's version of the Bloodline is this ruthless group that's willing to do anything. They're savages, right? That's the way that Paul Heyman has kind of pushed them uh, on the road to getting here. Is that, you know, Solo's bringing in these guys that... We're not sure about them, right? We're not sure about Tama Tonga. We're not sure about Tonga Loa. And everybody can have their own opinion on whether, you know, where you would rate what they've already done on the ruthlessness scale. But that's how they're pushing him. And it's just that Solo is willing to do anything to basically make this version of the Bloodline the best one that's ever been, uh, better than Romans, all that. Like, that's how they're playing it up. And, of course, you also had Solo mention on this edition of SmackDown before the main event against Cody Rhodes that Roman Reigns is not coming back. We know that was intentional because it also wants to give us a little red herring for when Reigns does eventually make that return, uh, which could be at SummerSlam, uh, if we're going to get that potentially rumored Cody versus Solo match, which we got for about a minute here, uh, and certainly they were not going to take it much longer than that, uh, based on they probably want to save it for the bigger match uh, at SummerSlam potentially, and they wanted to make it more uh, you know, notable with Jacob Fatu debuting and taking everyone out. But back to the clue here as to what we saw. Because they've been pushing this group as just ruthless, willing to do anything, that's what I really noticed whenever you saw Solo Sokoa and Jacob Fatu go to the middle of the ring after all the the damage had been done and put up the ones, and then behind them came the Tongans, Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa. But what a nice little masterful storytelling device that WWE did here was that you had these two not just get directly back into the ring and walk right up behind them and throw the ones up right when Solo and Jacob Fatu put theirs up. Instead, you see what you see on the screen right here. And you can go back and watch it. It looks a little bit better in motion than it does as a still shot, so like it tells the story much better. But what happened was you had Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa make their way into the ring, and they hesitated a little bit. Because you see them, and I kind of tried to catch it here. You can see them looking at Jacob Fatu. They are staring intently, not into his eyes, but they are staring intently at this man who is standing there and has just destroyed the three top babyfaces, three of the top babyfaces, however you want to put them in order, on SmackDown. Three of the biggest ones in the company. He just took them out in the span of two or three minutes, whatever it was. And so now they're telling the story that if the Tongans who were brought in by Solo Sokoa to be, you know, any at any means necessary. Like, that was the, the motto. They would, you know, get whatever they wanted by any means necessary to get that championship back from Cody. That started this whole entire story right after WrestleMania 40, was to get the championship back from Cody. That was Solo's first sort of mention right after WrestleMania 40. They wanted the title back. They want to get it back to the bloodline. And so he's brought in these two to be the guys that wreak havoc and help him get one step closer to that. But now... These two, you know, the the ruthless savages are now looking at someone with a hesitation of like, wait a second, we know we went to this level, but now we're going to that level with Jacob Fatu, one of the most dangerous men on the planet. That, I thought, was a big sign of where we're headed with this because they are definitely, and it, you know, you could see that just by the way that they, they, they put Jacob Fatu to take out the three guys we mentioned. 
but they are definitely going to push that this guy is the most dangerous of all in terms of how they are building this forward and the vision that Solo Sokoa has for his version of the bloodline, right? And if you're thinking, okay, come on, look in this guy's eyes, right? I mean, this is the guy you could tell, like the way they were shooting the camera, like the presentation, they made it feel like this guy was unlike anything else we'd seen. And that's why I thought it was so important to have the the visuals of seeing both Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa, who had already joined this group. They thought, hey, we're bringing this to the table. This is our version, how we think, you know, of going out and destroying whatever to get what Solo wants. But now Solo is willing to bring in this guy, the most dangerous man in the world. Like however you want to, you know, phrase him, right? That's what he's willing to do. Well, that tells me that, okay, this thing's about to escalate very quickly, to borrow a phrase from the one and only Ron Burgundy. So if we think of it that way, now I think it's obvious what we're headed towards here because you have a scenario where not even just in the short term, but also in the long term, where Jacob Fatu is the person that, even if the Tongans are already seeing him as, you know, as dangerous as anything out there, I mean, we could certainly see a scenario in the future. We know there's still um, Hikaleo from New Japan. We talked about another video. He's going to come in. It seems like the name's going to be Talatanga for him. You would expect him to join this version of the Bloodline, um, you know, as he comes in uh, to, to join this group to give them five. The reason why is I think I've got my five for the big War Games five-on-five five match that we may be getting at Survivor Series, but I'm going to tell you that in a video here in a couple days because I think it now all fits together based on Jacob Fatu. His debut, to me, changed everything because it tells us exactly where this is headed. But I think now, when you look at it, you've got a scenario where Jacob Fatu is going to be presented as one of the most dangerous people that WWE has ever seen. He was kind of the tipping point for this whole thing to where Paul Heyman has pushed all of this about this being such a a, a group that you know is not going by the original Bloodlines commandments, right? They're willing to take this to a level that, that Roman Reigns was never going to take it to. That's not, not the way the bloodline did things. And so you now kind of have a scenario where at some point in the future, way down the line, however far it is, you can have a bloodline that maybe at some point overthrows Caesar, right? I mean, that's what we said. If if Solo Sokoa is about to get renamed as Caesar Sokoa, or that's how they're going to start referring to him, you could see that because now they have the guy in Jacob Fatu who is capable of... You know, essentially having the Tongans, maybe having, like we said, Tala Tonga, whenever he joins, like all three of those guys, basically, you know, looking at him and saying, we're going to follow you because we don't want to do anything that would ever jeopardize our standing with you because we know you would kick our ass. Like those are things now they can play up with the story. And I thought that's how they did it here was to really show you that maybe even Tama Tonga and Tongaloa Two guys that we're supposed to be afraid of, whether you are or not, that's your own you know, opinion. But if they're afraid of this guy, then that's not good for everyone else because Solo has went to that level, right? He has taken things to that point now. And you have a guy who already feels like a big deal in one segment, it debuted as just, like I said, one of the most impressive debuts I've seen at the top level in a group like this that is the main story. Um, they did it very effectively. I mean, Triple H put it all together here to make it work. Because you now have a guy who can main event against the Cody Rhodes. You have a guy who can main event against the Roman Reigns if they want to do the Reigns versus Jacob Fatu match. Um, Solo is still that guy, too. They're still going to put Solo in those positions. We know that. But now you've got someone who can sort of either be an equal to Solo or can eclipse Solo. And that furthers the story even more because, like I said, you already have two members of this new group who are already saying, "Uh uh-oh, we're worried about this guy that's in the group. We are not going to mess with him, and that is what you want. You want that element of sort of tension between everyone. And now that they've added that with Jacob Fatu, um, knowing that not only would he take out anyone uh, in his sight, he may take out, you know, not anyone outside the bloodline. He may take out somebody within the bloodline because that's just what this guy does. He, he's dangerous. And I thought commentary did a great job pushing just that Solo took this to a level that he, he should not have. Like, this, he should not have done this. And I think that's what you want. You want to keep pushing this guy. Like I said, it was a, the whole package was tremendous to be able to put everything together here. And so now you've got someone uh, who, and by the way, I'm just going to tell you, like 
Jacob Fatu is going to be a big baby face at some point in the future. It may not be, you know, now, but I mean, people are going to have no choice but to cheer this guy. And that was, again, part of the rumor and report that was out there a while ago was that you know, there could have been a little concern about that, um, that he was going to outshine so low and that people would, you know, be all into Jacob Fatu. I don't think that's going to change coming out of this um, segment here. Um, that They're, they're going to be into Jacob Fatu based on what they saw him do. Uh, but I think now what it does is it guarantees us that reunion that we all thought we're going to get Roman Reigns reuniting with the Usos. Like I said, I, I now see how they're, I, I can see it. Like they've done so much good stuff here to tell us kind of where we're headed with that maybe big war games match. Now, when you think about who's going to be on what side, uh, we just really just needed this one. This was the one that we needed to know for sure um, how the sides were going to look. But I think this was the one that told us everything um, that they, they were going to bring in Jacob Fatu to put with this new version of the bloodline. Um, and now you've got all the pieces in place to where you've got solo bring in, you know, this assassin, the Samoan werewolf and Jacob Fatu, He's got his other two guys in Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa. There could be the biggest of the group joining soon with Piccoleo. Like we said, Tala Tonga seems to be the trademark name that WWE has gone with for him. So you've got the tallest guy. Um, so you've got, you know, visually you're going to have all these different elements in place for this new version of the Bloodline. And so that, I think, sets everything up now for what is, again, a story that that certainly had some dips. Uh, you know, last year, I guess you could say, right? Um, maybe after the Sammy stuff, you wondered, okay, things start to dip a little bit in this Bloodline story. Can they get it back? Well, The Rock comes back. They got it back. And now, even though this is kind of a transition to get to the returns of Roman Reigns and The Rock further down the line, most likely, um, th this thing is heating up now. And, and it's why, I mean, people were wondering why there was so much anticipation with Jacob Fatu debuting. You saw exactly why. This guy has things that other wrestlers just don't have. Like, he has a presence to him, and the way that they executed it, uh, I think it made it very clear that he is going to be presented as a top star, and the reaction you saw from Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa tells you that they're already willing to go this route. These are not four <laughs> equals maybe anymore. These are guys who all have specific, dedicated roles in this new version of the Bloodline, Maybe it is Solo as the Caesar character, right? Maybe now it is Jacob Fatu as just the total, like we said, the assassin, the guy who is just going to, um, you know, be able to do anything and everything that the bloodline needs to preserve, you know, themselves. Um, he is going to be able to do that because there's no one who can defeat Jacob Fatu. He's that dangerous. And then you've got, like we said, maybe Tama Tonga, Tonga Loa, falling back a little bit just based on the fact that Solo has just went out and recruited this guy to the mix. So um, I thought that was a very clear indicator. And like we said, kind of a little little clue there that WWE gave us as to where things were headed, uh, not just with the way they presented Jacob Fatu, but really with the reaction there of everyone. Uh, commentary, Tama Tonga, Tonga Loa, they, they gave it all to us in that one incredible segment. I thought it was just a tremendous uh, piece of work there uh, with the storytelling that they did to get Jacob Fatu added to the mix. So you guys let me know what you think about Jacob Fatu's debut. It was the one we've been talking about for a while. When was it going to happen? And now that we've seen it, what did you think? What do you think about, like we said, the reaction from everyone, how they're going to be pushing Jacob Fatu moving forward? And do you see a scenario where he does start to outshine solo? Is that a story they tell further down the road? Maybe that this becomes Jacob Fatu's bloodline uh, with The Rock, as we said. My prediction would still be that The Rock is the person pulling all the strings here. Um, but there's so many ways you can play out this story now when you add a guy like this to the mix. And I think that makes it very exciting uh, moving forward with the bloodline. So as always, guys, I appreciate you watching. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button on your way out. Let me know your thought about the debut of the one and only Samoan werewolf, Jacob Fatu.